Lieutenant Casey Marwine of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. I am a twin otter uh, pilot, and this is one of our four twin otters. Uh, the twin otter has uh, two 56 L 27 engines and 620 horsepower, full feathering, full reverse, uh, cruise 135, 140 knots. Uh, we have a variety of missions for the Twin Otter, uh, from marine mammal surveys, coastal mapping, snow surveys, air chemistry, and fire X. Uh, these windows are specifically designed for um, our marine mammal studies, and they, they get a better view, and the scientists can look out the window, and they use these tick marks to spot the marine mammal, and then they're able to um, gauge a distance and give that distance to us pilots and tell us kind of where they want to go left or right and we'll go and circle around the, the animal and then they'll actually sometimes remove a window in the back and take photos of the brain now um, for identification and if they're tangled up or if they have uh, injuries and things like that. The Twin Otter has a pretty the landing gear. It, it has a variety of missions outside of what just what we do, from uh, amphibious and have floats to skis, um, tundra tires, landing on unproved services, um, that sort of thing. No, it doesn't have any of that, but uh, it does have the capability to do it anyway. Uh, back here to the cargo doors and the air stair. We're able to load our cargo, um, the door will open as well, and just ease of adding equipment, heavy stuff. Um, we can put a auxiliary fuel tank in there for increased range and endurance, and uh, computer racks get secured in there, more seats depending on the uh, crew for the survey. Just really easily uh, adaptable. Uh, back onto the tail section, uh, really large uh, rudder, horizontal stab, and um, just a lot of controllability, especially slow air speeds. Twin Otter is also rated for icing. It's got the pneumatic uh, de-icer boots on the, on the leading edge of both the wing and the stab there. And uh, onto the other side of the air cap, we have the other side of the stab, and uh, we'll call vortex generators. It just helps the flow of air across the um, across the surface and for, again, controllability. Uh, one, two, is an emergency exit, but also uh, another uh, bubble window for somebody to sit and look out for marine surveys. And uh, there'll be another seat in there. And um, they also have this uh, belly window, we call it. And there'll be somebody that lays down and looks directly out the bottom. Uh, you can get some really good views of uh, marine mammals that way. Not really the most comfortable position to be in for four or five hours, but uh, it's a position. <laughs> now we talked a little bit about the larger control services, um, the flaps extending all the way to you know, 47 and a half degrees, and uh, also the larger aileron. It just gives you a you know, really slow and, and um, Lot of, and still have a lot of controllability. Uh, the wing fence and again the um, pneumatic boots on the on the wings, uh, and then the wing fence is for to help the airflow over the wing for again controllability. Uh, the props are also heated. Um, little uh, boots on there. They're just electrically heated for de-icing again. And then kind of a, I don't know, we call it a warmer plate almost for um, ice as it kind of flings off of the prop. And up here is our nose wheel. Right now the tiller is uh, detached for towing. Um, but typically on the ground, at slow speeds, you can control using a, a tiller. Um, 
on the left yoke. Um, but typically, you're controlling the aircraft on the ground using uh, differential thrust and uh, rudder as you kind of pick up speed. Uh, because it's so large, it gives you quite a bit of control. And thank you for joining me on the tour of the Twin Honor. Enjoy the rest of your tour. Hi again, Lieutenant Connor Regan coming to you on the floor of the NOAA Aircraft Operations Center in, one of, in front of one of our Twin Otter aircraft. These aircraft, we have four of them. They're multifaceted, they're very diverse, they can support a wide variety of missions that we do. Uh, they're specifically made for low-level surveys, so a thousand feet and below looking at everything from whales, seals, dolphins, sea lions, sea turtles, uh, flying low to the ground over the snowpack, trying to get an idea how much water quantity is in the snowpack itself. We have four of these aircrafts. They are deployed all around the country for most of the year. It just so happens we have one of these here to take a look at. Come on over. This aircraft is Canadian made. It is made by De Havilland Canada. Designed for short takeoff and landing, very stable at low air speeds. That's why we use it for so many low level surveys. Let's go on board. Okay, so we're inside of Twin Otter NOAA 46. You can see there's not much room to stand in here, but we can actually put a lot of equipment in the back of this plane. We can rearrange the seats, put a wide variety of science equipment, whether that's uh, chemistry racks for flying through uh, forest fire smoke and collecting information on the air we breathe. The ability to adapt the interior of the aircraft ensures the success of the mission and that the scientists are able to use the equipment that they need. This aircraft and all of our Twin Otter aircraft are like big Legos. We can reconfigure them for any sort of uh, project that we're working on. So this project is currently set up for snow survey, so there's only a few seats in the front of the aircraft, but we can actually fit up to eight scientists in the back of this plane. So one of the most unique things about our Twin Otter aircraft is that we have these bubble windows on either side. It allows scientists to look down and underneath the aircraft to see the marine mammals swimming at the surface of the ocean, the water below. So now in the cockpit of the Twin Otter, NOAA 4-6, uh, one of my favorite planes. Some interesting things about this plane is that the power levers that's controlling the power to the engines are actually up here. That's kind of characteristics for uh, seaplane designed uh, aircraft like the Twin Otter. We always fly with two pilots. Left seat pilot, where I'm sitting right now, is usually flying the plane. The right seat pilot is usually monitoring. And in case we ever forget what aircraft we're in, we always have our Twin Otter mascots to make sure we know where we are. Usually two pilots sitting in the plane, uh, left seat pilot is generally flying, the right seat pilot is generally monitoring what the left seat pilot is doing, making sure we're safe at low level. Uh, this plane is, as I said, made for low level surveys, flying really low to the ground, doing 45 degree banks over whales, and uh, it's quite the aircraft.
a time-lapse video of one of our NOAA twin otters sampling air quality over a wildfire. time-lapse video of one of our twin otters flying the same snow survey line in the fall and in the winter to measure the snow water equivalent. Finally, here's a video from one of our conservation partners, the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, showing our aerial efforts to protect the endangered Northeast right whale. Coming call. Oh. Another call if you want okay. to switch over. Noah 4 go ahead. We have a more recent right whale mother calf pair sighting. So you said the right whale mom calf pair was sighted at 9.25. Do kind of a flat pass over the point and start circling. Okay, sounds great. Thanks, guys. We've got uh, about 28 knots of wind up here, so it's going to be a little windy on the circle end, but we'll get it dialed in. Awesome. All right, so they're at 11 o'clock, Nick. Got them. Three, two, one, mark, confirmed, mother calf pair. Okay, windows coming out. Looks like, Ashley, they're both at the surface right now. I see them. Okay. One of the right whale mother calf pairs that we got a chance to cite was Calvin. Um, her number is 2223. Calvin was orphaned at eight months, I think. Her mother was hit by a ship um, and killed, and researchers didn't know if she would survive or not at that young age, um, but she did. So they named her after the spunky uh, cartoon character, Calvin, of <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin actually had a calf in 2015. That was her most recent calf up until this season, and so we were really excited. And any time we get a chance to see a calf, it's always exciting to know that uh, another whale has made it into the population. Yes, they're so uh, critically endangered. There's around 400 in the population, so any data that we can have, especially on real time from an aerial perspective, is going to be invaluable to the scientific community. Knowing that one of the threats to these critically endangered whales are ship strikes, knowing that where they are and in real time sending that information out to commercial vessels, military crafts that are navigating through the waters on the cabin grounds is extremely important to their survival. And so by being able to pass that information along in real time gives them that fighting chance for at least one more day. 